For any Xbox or PlayStation codes or cheap games on any platform, use the referral link in the description. It'll take you to G2A.com. Use the promo code CHEZ over there and you'll get yourself 3% cash back. For all No Identity merchandise, hats, hoodies and t-shirts, follow the link in the description down below to the No Identity Fan Fiber website. Hey guys, welcome to episode number 5 of season 3 here at Oviedo. Today we end the transfer window. We also have the small task of facing Barcelona and the second leg of the fourth qualifi qualifying, yes, the fourth qualifying round of the Champions League. We want 12 and a half million for Kishner, which I'm not willing to pay, but I will go as high as 10. So, uh, I mean, no, maybe, yeah, uh, 10 and a half. All right, I'll stretch to 10 and a half. There you go, Lazio, accept that one. Pretty sure Kishner's gonna come in, and that'll mean that we have four very capable wingers in, obviously, Conor Plianka, who we brought in in the last episode, Gonzalez, Vadillo, and fingers crossed, Kishner too. They have accepted the 10.5, well, I thought they might. And he only wants, ex in fact, he's willing to take a, a £500 pay cut to join me. I'll say important first team player, but I'm certain that he will start in my starting 11 with Conor Plianka on the left and Kishner on the right, or vice versa. But first, Barcelona in the league. The first game of the season doesn't necessarily get much more difficult, does it, to be honest? Drop the video a like if you enjoy. Subscribe to the channel too to make sure you don't miss out on any further content. I will rotate the side slightly from the one that played in the uh, the game against Salzburg, but we should be able, actually, to get a decent enough result here with a... Uh, I mean, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping for a draw. A dr I'm hoping for a draw, basically. So uh, I'd love a draw at home against Barcelona. We beat them twice last season. That's obviously not going to happen again. I'm almost certain of it, but... God, my squad is so big. I just need people to come and bid for my kids to go out on loan. No one wants to sign any of my players on loan. It's heartbreaking because they've all got such great potential, but they're not good enough to do a job in my side, so I need them to get experience so that they can then come back and be good enough. Oh, rant over. Right, Barcelona at home, followed by Salzburg at home, and then hopefully Champions League group stage. Group stage? I, something to do with the Champions League. I just can't quite say, apparently. Hopefully the Champions League group stage will become a reality. Now we've faced two types of Barcelona teams so far in this series. A full strength side, which we beat 1-0, and a weakened side, which we beat 3-0. Now this is a mixture, it seems. Did I just... Alex Iwobi on the left-hand side of the front three. <laughs> what? They've got Luis Suarez up top, but Alex Iwobi at left wing. Sure. Okay, I don't understand. I mean, they finished second in the league last year, Barcelona, despite playing a weakened side for the majority of this season, as far as I could tell. Christian Taylor, a player that we were previously interested in but put off by his wages, starts on the right. Why is Alex Iwobi at Barcelona? That is one of the most peculiar signings I think I've seen in career mode. Christian Taylor here proving that his dribbling is good enough, but we're able to get rid of it and get it away. I have no idea how this game is going to go, considering the state of this Barcelona side. I mean, like I say, even despite the fact that... Oh, I'll give that straight to use. Even despite the fact that it's uh, a weakened side, I'd still be happy with the point. But, oh God, Taylor's going to run onto his own pass because he's so quick. And thankfully missed the target. I'd be happy with the point. But, I mean, surely we could go for the win here against the side this week. Hernandez sweeps out wide there nicely to Vidio. Overlapping run coming... From Rico, we get it in there to Pineda, who spun well. And Titi can't deal with him. Pineda, good save by Selesen. On the front foot. They've had one chance, we've had one chance. At least we drew a save out of the keeper. And he's going to come and punch that. Oh, I'd have probably hit that first time, given the opportunity. But it won't be knocked it down to Suarez. Now try and catch me on the counter, but Sergio Busquets isn't necessarily the man to be sprinting away on a counter, is he? Iwobi gets this into Sergi Sampa. And Barca have their progress halted by Ed Lewis. Do use. Through the gap to Luis Suarez, backing in, around the corner to Alex Iwobi, who's oh, very nearly scored an absolutely tremendous goal. Off the woodwork it comes. That just floated and floated and floated towards that top corner. I had no idea whether it was going to go in or not. I probably would have been made to eat my words had he scored that goal, to be completely honest. Questioning his place in this Barcelona side and inches away from scoring one of the best goals we've conceded all series. Abel Hernandez will get this out wide here to Pineda. We'll go back to Abel Hernandez. We'll let fly on his left. No, we won't. It's turned out to be a great pass to Gonzalez, who hits the post. Now we've both hit the woodwork. Unbelievable start to this game after 23 minutes, but it's still nil-nil. Teo inside to Sergi Sampa. 
Trying to out muscle him, but I can't. Good ball in, and Iwobi has his effort saved by Aritha Balaga. Of course, Alex Iwobi is their most dangerous player so far in this game. They've had 64% possession in this one, Barcelona, which you, I guess, would expect, despite the fact that it's not anywhere near a first team 11 from them, but they've been loose with possession there, but I guess so have I. Pineda wins it back again, though. And we'll try and carry on a counter, but again, I've lost possession. And oh, I thought I'd won it back there, but no, Jordi Elba's done brilliantly to turn away from me into Sergi Samper. Cross comes in. They're getting a free kick for something. I'm not exactly sure what I did wrong there, but never mind. Luis Suarez will take the set piece. I'm sure they'd rather he was in the box, considering he's almost certainly not going to shoot from here. And he has dinked it in. Headed away. And as far as Dius, in there to Jordi Elba. Sergi Samper to Suarez. Close him down for his shoots. Retzos with a block, corner for Barca again. Oh, are they going to go short for a second time? No, apparently is the answer. The ball whipped in. It's going to reach them Titi, but Hyrovic gets there to get it away. I'm trying desperately to pass it out, but just can't get it out of his feet. And there's a the half-time whistle. Nil-nil at half-time. Chances at both ends. Woodwork hit at both ends, but no goals. Jordi Alba. And just, hang on, Everton. Everton have just signed Anthony Martial from Manchester United. I didn't quite hear the figure there, but we'll have a look on... No, don't score. Thank you, Teo, for missing a guilt-edged opportunity. Anthony, what is going on with these transfers? Anthony Martial to Everton and Alex Iwobi at Barcelona, who, interestingly enough, as we just mentioned him again, has gone off for Neymar. So we'll see if Neymar can make a difference to this game. But nil-nil after almost an hour, and neither side have come close to scoring, other than that Christian Teo chance, I guess, have come close to scoring in this second half so far. Give me... Please, Christian, if you don't mind. Oh, he's turned me nicely there, actually. He tried to do it again. Samper into Dius. Sergio Busquets back to Dius. To Sampa. This is a great move. Or the Balaga with a save, and it'll be a corner for Barca. He's starting to turn the screw now in this second half. Is the screw going to go all the way? I'm not sure. I hope not. Munir has come on for Christian Teo. Well, then will go sideways here to Hirovic and make another run, hopefully, which he has done. I fancy him for pacing against Mascherano over a distance. And he has gotten there, Abel Hernandez, and he's away here. And Hernandez can't score. Sillison with the save. Pressure on him from a defender. So you can kind of understand why he didn't. Oh, hit the target. Well, score more so than hit the target. Hirovic will put this back in. At the back post is... Well, it's going to drop it to Ed Lewis. Sillison, what a reaction save. The Dutch goalkeeper is making the difference here in these final stages. There's only 15 minutes or so to go. That's flicked away and will go all the way out for a throw. So I'm not going to be able to catch that with Julian Korb. And it's their throw as well. 15 minutes to go, still nil-nil. I'd still be happy with a draw, but if we're going to create chances like that, then we might still be able to nick the win. Nice tackle by Rico. And Hirovic could just let fly here with his left foot, which he has done. Oh, that wasn't far away at all. Keeper scrambling. Nearly hitting the woodwork there the same way that Alex Iwobi did. But unfortunately for me, and luckily for them, it didn't even go anywhere near the goal. Big throw out here to Abel Hernandez. Three minutes added on at the end of the game. I'm going to keep driving wide here. I've got people in the middle ready to receive the ball if I can get it to them. Hernandez in here to Fernandez, who loses out. And now Fernandez is well out of position. And Neymar is going to try and ping in a ball in behind. Head this home, please. He hasn't headed it, Rico, but we are going to get it away. Looks like... Unless they create something from this clearance that it is going to be, which they're not going to do. Oh, but they've got a free kick. They might still. Don't take it quickly. He's taking it quickly. Sergi Sampa. Shot blocked. And I think that might be nil-nil. Here it is. So we've drawn against Barcelona. We haven't yet lost to them in this save. But we haven't been able to beat them for the first time as, uh, either. They've uh, been able to dominate possession and chance creation. But... Neither side able to make the breakthrough despite both hitting the post. So we'll go back to the transfer window, see if we can finalise that Kirchner deal. If not, then it'll be Salzburg next. Transfer offering for Luis Sanchez, which is interesting, from PSG. Player that hasn't seen too much football so far this season, if any, actually, in pre-season. But a player I definitely want to keep. And Kirchner has accepted. So we have another new signing. We have 15 new players this season. Kiesner will go straight into the starting lineup ahead of Gonzalez as well. And not only that, but will play in the uh, Champions League in the game upcoming against uh, Salzburg. Where are we? There we are. Kiesner will go straight into the starting lineup. We will drop uh, Gonzalez back here. And I'm going to put Gonzalez on the bench ahead of Vidio, I think, actually. Apologies, Vidio, but Gonzalez is actually the better player. So uh, we'll do that and we'll head now towards that game against Salzburg.
Chan with the throw in there to Barisha. Back to Chan again. And Barisha is in space in the box. He's looked to drill it in, though, and that is going to be a corner to Salzburg after 10 minutes. And we do have the two away goals in our back pocket, of course, which will come very much in handy. But if we can, can keep a clean sheet, then we're, of course, definitely through. So that's all we'll my main aim is here I'm not really going to push too hard to try and uh, win the game outright we've got someone that stayed down and might have to come off here momentarily he's writhing around in agony on the floor there and he is going to have to come off he's, it seemed like he was in a lot of pain there it's actually Leisner so we'll take Leisner off for Wilkinson it looks like he was holding his shoulder hopefully it's well if he's going to have to come off then it's going to be more than just a bruise isn't it hopefully it's only uh, no he's holding his knee he's holding his ankle it looks as if he was holding his and he's holding his shoulder Make your mind up, mate. What actually hurts? What? Well, I, I don't know what's going to be injured then by the time we get back. Surely he can't have broken his ankle and his dislocated his shoulder at the same time. That would be horrendous bad luck. Ricardo, Konoplyanka, squeezes that through the gap to Timor. There is some space on this right-hand side. Use Feminia first and then go out to Kishner. Not really had a chance to do anything so far in this game, Ricardo Kishner, but he's done brilliantly there. And we're actually put it together quite a nice move. Kiko will look for Cicciaretti again. Oh, unfortunately, his footwork lets him down. I'm really not getting on with Cicciaretti, I have to be honest. You guys were very disappointed when I missed his pre-contract opportunity from Season 1 into Season 2. So I made sure I got him here going from Season 2 to Season 3 on a pre-contract. But I'll be honest, I'm not enjoying him. At this rate, I will be selling him on in January if he doesn't, con if he doesn't start to improve. But he does have half a season to uh, impress me and change my mind. So... We'll have to hope for your sake that he does. Twisting one within the other. Gets it into Radishevitz. Orbelin. Through to Chan again. And I've missed the tackle. Chan, good save by Aretha Balaga. <sighs> Struggling here. Aretha Balaga made five saves so far. Their keeper yet to make a single stop. Keeshan should win this header and has done, but it's dropped only as far as Miranda. I'd have shot there. They've got a man down injured in the box, but he's not going to be able to get up and he may have to come off here. We're going to have an injury apiece. Uh, looks like he's going to be okay. Conor Plianka will try and utilise his pace here, perhaps. Maybe go for a 1-2. Or lose the ball. That's the other option, I guess. Chan now looking to come down the line. But a great tackle by Ruben Vezo stops him. Nearly half-time. Still 0-0. Chan to Radishevitz. Out to Berisha. Oh, he's nutmeg Kiko Feminia there. They'll take the advantage. Shot comes in. And Althor Blaga at full stretch to stop it going in. Kiko Feminia got schooled there. Corners come in from Lazaro. It's floated. Carr will get it back out to the corner taker. Dinked back in. Could have caught that, Aritha Balaga. And catches up one instead, so it's all right. Kiko in there to Chicharetti. Skips away from a couple of players. Oh, it's meant for Hesalu, but Castro will find Hesalu. Find a bit of space. Bury that. Yes, always confident in Hesalu in situations like that. A third goal for us, although it doesn't change anything really for Salzburg. They needed two to, uh, as is always the situation with these uh, two-legged away goal affairs, they need a two to equalise on aggregate and take it to extra time. They now need three to draw on aggregate, but that will put them through on away goals. So they needed three to win outright, and they still need three to win. So the uh, outlook for them hasn't changed, but it's nice to get ourselves on the score sheet, if only for the psychological advantage of actually being in front for the second tie in a row. And Wilkinson's done well there to win the ball back. If I get another, pretty sure that will be game over as far as uh, Salzburg are concerned. Nasalu's played in here, but I'm just going to loft it into the middle. And oh, oh, it might still drop. It has. Kiesner just can't turn away from Samaseku. Unfortunately for him, he's not going to replicate what our other new winger did and get a goal on his debut. At least not yet. But he's still got 28 minutes to try and do so. Through the gap there to Nasalu. Fouled? No, not fouled. And injured. Do not give me another injury, please, game. Get up, please, Hesalu. You are my main man. He's still down. He's slowly getting to his feet. But he'll have to leave the field of play before being able to come back on. And Aretha Blagger makes a good save there. A lot of power behind that effort. And Prevliak could still have another opportunity here. Has done, but Aretha Blagger does well again to put the save in. Now, hesalu has been able to continue here, which is good news. Hopefully that means he won't be out for long, if at all, when we get back. What on earth is going on when we get back to the menus? But we... Oh, God, I just can't get rid of this. 
diving in there with Timor. And another man has gone down. That's Galdemez. He's back on his feet, though. Hesolu now sprinting away, and he's got no injury symbol next to him either, which gives me confidence that he will actually be OK in the long run. Now, can we find a teammate? Dropping off on the edge of the box there is a catch who's just come on. He's rolled brilliantly. He's left-footed, but we use his right, and we should have used his left. Over yet. Into Carr. Good tackle. Final whistle really isn't far away now. There it is. A 1-0 win in the second leg. We are through to the Champions League group stage. My only shot on target the entire game. But we did enough. Now, were Napoli able to turn their result around? We don't know. Basel 2, Ghent 0. Leon 3-1 up against Poznan. And uh, Spartak Moscow rather resounding winners against Dundalk of Ireland. So it looks like Spartak Moscow will be in the group stage. But I don't know. Who will be joining us in our group stage? Please don't be Hesedu. No, Leicester's only out for nine days as well. Good. It was his shoulder then that was the uh, injured limb or injured part of his body, his anatomy. Prize money will come in handy as well, but I don't know where, I don't think we'll get that till next season, I don't suppose. Uh, match reschedule, right, that'll be for the group stage of the Champions League and £2 million. Great. Well, that hasn't gone into my budget now, has it? I don't presume, and no, it hasn't. So. Our budget stays as is. We will have some money to spend, though, come January for pre-contracts, as is uh, seemingly the way with this series. Pre-contracts, quite popular way to uh, go about business. But I'll move myself out of the way for deadline day in editing and show you these uh, pages here. So let's go to deadline day, just as a reminder for me in editing that when we get to deadline day, I need to move myself. As we start deadline day, we have a transfer offer for... Herrera, transfer offer that I'm not willing to accept, to be honest. Via the lead can give me a million pounds, if you don't mind, for someone that's valued at 850k. Yes, he's 31, so I probably accept value, but hopefully we can drive their uh, price up a little bit higher. So the three biggest transfer deals so far in this window, De La Feu to Bayern Munich for 42 million pounds, 41 and a half for Suso to Real Madrid, and Martial to Everton for 39 and a half. So they've replaced De La Feu already. Uh, no massive recent signings. Atleti have let Stefan Savic go, as we know. Hernani has gone from Porto to Celta Vigo, but not much spent yet. They're willing to give me value. I said I'd accept value. I'm a man of my word. We will accept valuation for Jonathan Pereira. Thank you very much. Right. How much has been spent so far? Just 30... I say just. Just £30 million. Uh, just a little bit more now. Some small deals going through so far. This will be Pereira being sold, which is good news. That's another player that we feel is surplus to requirements that has now left the club. No other big deals going through yet. Aritha Balaga and Akeche leaving Bilbao. Of course, they came to me in this window. Big deal there, though. Strootman from Atletico Madrid to Fiorentina. So he's gone back to Italy. Went from Roma to Atleti earlier on in the save. And now has gone back to Serie A to play for Fiorentina. Five hours remaining. Any other big deals to go through? Another big-ish one, I believe, though. Unless that's just a number of smaller signings bumps that up, but Stroitman is now the third biggest signing of this window. Yozabed has gone from Fulham to Milan, someone else moving to Serie A. We've got a transfer off here, presumably. No, it's Carlos Veyes had an approach made from Lyon, but we're not interested in him now. Now we've got Ricardo Kiesner. Okay, a big deal's gone through somewhere, surely. £224 million. I think that's that Arsenal one for Correa. It is £52 million paid for Angel Correa from Atleti to Arsenal. Another direct rival in the league weakened. Mkhitaryan has gone to Everton as well. Man United have sold Mkhitaryan and Martial to Everton. What a ridiculous window. An unbelievable window. So look at the transfer history. Some really strange deals going through. Right, so uh, we'll look at the transfer history. 52 million, 48, 42, 41 and a half, 40. Martial was 39 and a half. Wow, Danilo Pereira to Mucci Gladbach for 37 and a half. Lamar to Manchester United. That's another reason why they'll have let um, a couple of wingers go for 35 and a half. Van Dijk has gone to Manchester City. Savage to Dortmund we knew about. As Moon to Leverkusen for 29 and a half. Pereira from Watford to Roma for 28. Ruiz of Wolfsburg. Camacho to Villarreal. Taliska to Villarreal spending some money. Pulisic to, or Pulisic to uh, Napoli from Dortmund. Uh, so that was me. <laughs> Celta Vigo said in Conifli, anchor to Oviedo. Bayer has gone through to Lyon. Espinosa is in at Celta Vigo. Cordoba to Mainz. Mitchell Weiser to Atletico Madrid. A player, of course, we know from the Cambridge United road to glory. Bender in at Inter. Leuna into uh, Fiorentina. Moussa Dembele 
into Dortmund. They now have two Dembele's in their squad and some more interesting ones as well. Las Palmas to Schalke. Las Palmas to Schalke. Yep, the whole club transferred to Schalke. Mauricio Lemos has gone to Schalke, a player again we're familiar with, thanks to the Everton career mode. And Everton made another signing as well. Mangala, Elkin Mangala to Everton from Manchester City. Everton are splashing the cash in this window. Some really strange transfers, unexpected. Mkhitaryan and Martial, both to Everton. You cannot tell me you expected that to happen. There's absolutely not one of you out there that would have predicted that. We won Manager of the Month. Great. Thanks then. I'll take that. We've only played one game in the league and drew nil-nil with Barcelona, but I will take Manager of the Month. Thank you very much. Uh, Bruno is my only youth player now. Still potential of 89-94. to He's going to be fantastic. Should we get the time between now and FIFA 18 to actually use him? I'm very much looking forward to using him. Right, now I will quickly see who we've got in our Champions League group. And the answer is Paris Saint-Germain, Dortmund and Spartak Moscow. Right, well we are in the Champions League, but with PSG and Dortmund in my group, we might not be in it for long. <sighs> Bollocks. Well, if we can beat Real Madrid and Barcelona at times in this series, there's no reason we can't do the same to PSG and Dortmund. Have faith, Chess. Have faith in yourself. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel for more. Let me know what you thought of those rather odd transfers in the comment section down below, and I'll see you next time.